Hello, everyone. As you can see, I'm in the choir loft, joined by the wonderful David Clio Morse, but we have a special guest today, and that is our good, good friend, the Reverend Judith Alexis. Hello, Judith. Hi, everybody. Hi, Padamardi. Hi, David. So those of you who don't go back as far as I do at St. Joseph uh, don't know what a wonderful, wonderful person this is and what a treat it is to have her with us on camera today. Uh, Judith was a member of the congregation back when we uh, were hosting a Haitian congregation here at St. Joseph's. And uh, she was active with our Anglo congregation as well and really served as a bridge between those two congregations and did an incredible, incredible job uh, in that regard. And then uh, the Holy Spirit gave her a little nudge on the shoulder. And as you can see, she ended up going off to, to seminary at the Seminary of the Southwest in Austin, Texas, and uh, eventually was ordained. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. We asked Judith to suggest uh, hymns for today. And the first one that she had said was a personal favorite of hers is I Surrender All. And so we're going to have David lead us in that hymn. Oh, Judith, tell us about why that's one of your favorites. It's one of my favorites because it's one of the earliest hymns that I grew up um, hearing and learning. Mm. Um, my grandmother was a Baptist. So those, that's, a, that's a very stable, um, a staple Baptist hymn. So mm. it's easy, the refrain is easy, and there's parts. So it was uh, my grandmother by two us and I. So two people will say, I surrender all, and the other two would, would answer. So mm -hmm. this is something we did every night um, with me, as far as I can remember, with me sitting at my grandmother's um, lap. She was sitting in a rocking chair, and I never sat on a chair. I only sat in my grandmother's lap. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, you know, firstborn grandchild. I could do whatever I wanted. 
Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But it's also a way I live my life when I when I was sick, when I was paralyzed. That's the only thing you can do. You can surrender. You gotta stop fighting. You said, okay, God, this is this is I'm your child, so I acknowledge that you have the power, not I. So it's an easy reminder to let go and let God. Wow. How old were you when you had the paralysis? Uh, um, my 20s, 20, 26. Wow. Brain tumor and, and surgery, stroke. Um, yeah, so 26. Wow, wow. So when you're active one, on Friday and then you're paralyzed on, 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 on Monday, um, by Wednesday, you need to get it that it's not about you. It's God, God is the only person that could help you. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's very, then that came back. It's, it's a hint that I had forgotten, mm-hmm. but it came back in my recovery. Um, that's why I always, it was sung at my ordination. My brother sung it at my ordination. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just because like, even during the quarantine, you know, what, what are we going to do? Just surrender. You know, surrendering doesn't mean that you're not participating. Surrendering for me means that I acknowledge that I ha- there's a limit to what I can do, but that God can do all things. So if I surrender to God, I, I have a better chance here. Cool, cool. That'll preach. That'll preach. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell us what you're up to these days. I know you have been doing some supply work at different places. and but, Yes. Uh, yeah. So for the past three years, I am, I have been a professional supply priest <laughs> in um, um, Diocese of Connecticut, New York, and Long Island. I've gone as far as New Jersey. So basically, when somebody needs a priest, they call me. Mm-hmm. Free, I go. And, and my, it's first call, first serve. Uh-huh. I don't, I I have the ability to say services in Haitian Creole, French, and English, mm-hmm. which is a little bit um, easier and versatile for me. Mm-hmm. So I have the wonderful honor to worship with a variety of community, I mean, various communities from 600 people to, to five. Mm-hmm. Okay. From doing a, 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 right one at eight o'clock or right two at 10 o'clock in a Spanish service at 12 o'clock. So it's, it's not what I imagined, but it is wonderful. Mm-hmm. And again, I surrender all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got good training in that right one early service here. At oh yes. Thank you, Miss Mary and Miss Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl May and Mary Aprovich. Yes. <laughs> Back in the day when. Yep. The- I used to get up at 6.30, leave my house in Hollywood, Florida at 6, 6.15 to be there by 7.30 for the 8 o'clock service. No, to be there at 7.15 for the 7.30 service. Wow. Yeah. And Cheryl and Mary are still very active here. And yes. they're doing great things when, when we get past this quarantine. They'll be doing it here presently. Uh, Thank on you. Site. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, let me uh, bring back the screen for a second. And who is this wonderful man here? This is my husband of, knock on wood, <laughs> six years, uh, Ancelot Lewis. He is from Haiti. Um, been mar- we're married on June 25th. First, 2014. Right, and I was honored to be able to. Oh, yes. What? There's a great shot of you guys. I love that one. We, we were, for a while, we were part of a choir of the Stanford Chorus together. Uh-huh. So this was at one of our um, recitals. Nice, nice. See? Here we are at that recital. At the wedding. And I have never seen so much food in my <laughs> life as I saw at that day of your wedding. It was incredible. It was, it was light for Haitian standard. There was only one roasted pig. <laughs> yeah, an apple in his mouth. I remember that. <laughs> it was great fun. Great fun. 
And I was so grateful to the priests and the diocese that allowed me to be a part of that ceremony. Yeah, thank so, you. I love that shot. Yeah, that was, I think, the first selfie we ever took. Yes. <laughs> and there's a great casual shot more of the two of you. This is, um, this is, I think, engagement weekend in Haiti. Uh huh. This is the weekend we got engaged, and I was, we were walk. What were we go? Yeah, this is the weekend we got engaged. It was 2012. Uh huh. 2013. I forgot. It's been so long now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, I think I was I was traveling back. Mm -hmm. Was now here's going way back. Now I could tell you this was, um, Pent yeah, Pentecost Sunday. Yeah, that's the only time I wore red. Every red dress I had at St. Joe's was one for Pentecost, <laughs> <laughs> um, and with two members of the Haitian congregation. Mm -hmm. I I think they were two vestry members at mm -hmm. that. Point. Yes. So this was June 3rd, 2001. I arrived here March 11th, 2001. So this was Pentecost at St. John. Yes. And we did a joint uh, Pentecost service with our Haitian congregation. That was fun. Mm -hmm. And then Judith did uh, one of the readings in Creole. When was this? June 3rd, 2001. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, that's your dress. Then uh, at the time, ah, the good old days, <laughs> was teaching. So this is her children's class, January 6, 2002. Uh, and you see them gathered uh, in the parish hall, actually, for the class that you were teaching. Oh, you, you're telling me how old I am because some of those young ladies are mothers now. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, and here, here's the congregation of the yeah. congregation back in 2002. Two, yes. And there's Judith right front and center, as she should be. <laughs> uh, I can't say but enough. I, you know, I, I could have not done everything I did without St. Joe's, without Dee and Koki and, you know, and all of you teaching me how to do youth ministry and how to do liturgy. Um, you know, St. Joe's has always been there for me, teaching me and guiding me and being there for me. So, you know, it was fun. Ministry was fun. Ministry is fun, but it was really fun at St. Joseph. <laughs> I remember the, the songs from camp. <laughs> I, you know, thank you, God, for giving me wings. <laughs> now, this, this, I don't know if you remember, but we all went down to Key West Yes. Wonderful Thank anniversary you. of St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Key West. And That's these true. particular shots, we were staying in a uh, hotel, and the one room they gave us that was sort of the gathering place had a balcony. And we did our Sunday liturgy there. And if you look at the photo of me, uh, they're doing the Eucharist. Uh, you've actually got the, the water of the bay behind me. It was this idyllic setting for us to do a home Eucharist yes. for parishioners. But in a makeshift choir loft, if you remember, <laughs> there you are up in choir loft. With Steffi. <laughs> Steffi Reed, who was our first full-time youth minister. Uh -huh. Here's uh, he and my daughter, Bruce, daughter yes. uh, who was... Uh, probably at this time uh, a, a, a volunteer assistant helper with, with Steffi and a good Steffi. Uh, And that was such a special, special occasion for us at that time as a parish. People still talk about that who were able to, to be a part of that with us. It was fun. It was, it was. And here, uh, as most people have experienced, Judith participated in our Seder dinners here. This is one from 2003. Three, yes. And those were fun times. Yes. And then that, that leads us to this particular quote from 2 Timothy. And I asked Judith what was one of her favorite scripture quotes. And immediately, this is what she came back uh, to us with. So I'm going to read it. Then I'm going to let Judith tell us about why it's special for her. 
Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Avoid profane chatter, for it will lead people into more and more impiety. Powerful words, Judith. What, what speaks to you there? Um, when I was 10, I, was in a, I learned how to do church in the Baptist church. So when I was 10, I was in a club called the, um, club, um, the Astronaut Club. And our um, verse was 2 Timothy 2.15, do your best to present yourself as one approved by God. And I used to repeat it every, every Friday. You had to repeat it to start the meeting and, and to end the meeting. As I, as I got older, what really made it come home to me is do your best. Do your best knowing full well that it may be what God wants. It may be, it may be the contrary to what God, want, what God wants. But do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him. So... And I think in our um, state as human beings, sometimes we seek to do, um, to make, to do things perfectly. Mm -hmm. But we can't be perfect. So for me, it's a simple way of saying that every morning I'm going to get up and try to be the best Christian I can be. Knowing full well that by the end of the day, <laughs> I mean, I'd be, and then it's okay. I don't need to beat myself up for it because I did my best. And this is where I just surrender all to God. <laughs> but um, rightly administered the word of truth. Um, I was raised by a group of women, mostly women. And when I say, I mean, my aunt, their friends. And it was always about living an authentic life. And sometimes, in that you were born with power, that nobody can make you feel worse or bad or no, that that's nobody can do that. You are beloved, and you are chosen, and you have the skills. Mm -hmm. So you have to speak up, understanding that in speaking up, there are some consequences that are gonna come through it. But if you see something that you need, now you got to be smart about it because you're not Jesus Christ either. So you're not the sacrificial, you cannot take yourself to the, sac to, to the sacrificial altar. But that you, when it comes to speaking the truth about this, your, your context, the truth about what, how, what God is in your life, don't be ashamed don't be afraid to speak it because that's where you're here for, to dispense the word of God, to go towards the world and, and talk about Jesus and talk about what Jesus has done in your life. So, so as I got older and depending on why, where I am in my life, that verse takes a, 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 a new meaning. Hmm. Last part of the verse about chatter. Well, in, in Haiti, it was under a dictatorship. So when you heard something, there was three categories. There was news, there was information, and there was gossip. So very early on, you learn to determine which is which. So then you have to choose what to listen to, what to speak. Is what you're going to say needs to be said in dispensing whatever word of truth that you think you're dispensing. So you have to be very as a matter of survival, very careful in what you say, very careful in what you listen to, and very careful at what you repeat. So depending on where I am in my life, this, this verse takes different meaning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very applicable to what we go through right now in our yes. country and our world, huh? Yep. You know, when, 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 for example, I get a lot of Facebook stuff and WhatsApp stuff, like, I'm like, okay, first of all, who said it to you? What's the source? Does it make sense? Can you cooperate? Um, 
I'm still playing the bridge game. I mean, it's still the bridge. It doesn't matter if it's socioeconomic, different socioeconomic classes or language. As an interpreter, I'm still bridging. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, like during coronavirus, I got so many calls from people. This is, I heard this and I heard that. Then I have to say, okay, where did you hear it from? Because the Haitian community had a, has a lot of trouble dealing with the coronavirus. Not in not in working with it for example we take a lot of um natural medicine so a lot of teas you know a lot of um, um lime lemon ginger so that's fine but i was in a conference call where in order to treat the haitian um community in certain places we could not use the word corona because they heard corona and they saw death and then they would shy away from the from the from the doctor so we had to say, you know, it, it's the, the big fever. So I, I have to, you know, figure out what language to use to dispense what I need to dispense. Because in, in, in certain clinics in, in Brooklyn, in New York, the moment you said Corona, the patient did not come back. So we had to figure out, okay, what word to use. Okay, use fever. Fever, fever, no problem. They're coming for the fever. but. So those are the, the things that I have to, that's part of my ministry now. Yeah. You know, we, we obviously are one of the hotbeds in Florida at this point, but we have not experienced the type of death that you all had to go through up there. And just for a frame of reference, I know you, you told me the other day about uh, someone who's a friend of yours who has a congregation in Brooklyn and just had a yep. horrible story to, to tell. If you could just recap that a little bit. Well, it's it's a it's a community in the Bronx. It's mo it's mostly African American, Caribbean, mostly black, and they lost up to date now because you know you keep updating those numbers. They are they lost thirty seven members of that parish. Of one parish. One parish because they were at the epicenter in the Bronx. Thirty seven members of one parish, and, and you can't do funerals. Mm -hmm. Um, you can't do any gathering, mm -hmm. especially for a, a culture like us, where the whole process of mourning is so, so much part of who we are. It, it, it's it's going to have long lasting effects. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Oh, that's the world we live in. But 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 you're staying you you are staying healthy. You're 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 quarantining for the most part. I know you do some pastoral counseling uh, uh, via technology. Yes. Uh, well, good. Well, we need you healthy. The church needs you healthy. The world needs you healthy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, please keep my husband in in your prayers because he has to go out. He works at a grocery store, so mm -hmm. he has to be out there every day. And because that that was the stress of the coronavirus for us. Mm -hmm. Um, is he going to bring it to the house? How, what we got, we're going to react to it. But so far we, so far so good. We, we did well, um, but I know that's a concern for him. So, so we're, we'll continue to, uh, actually we have a, a prayer list for people from our parish who are frontline workers. And I think I can justify adding him to that list since. Thank you. Both, as far as I'm concerned, are part of us. So I'll, Thank I'll you. get that done for our next uh, edit, okay? Yes. All right. Well, this has just been a joy, uh, and I hope we can do it again. And I hope that soon we can do this in person, too. But we Me, know. too. <laughs> but we surrender all, right? Yes. So uh, we're going to conclude with another one of your favorite hymns. And if you could position it by telling us the history of it for you. The history, first of all, I didn't know it was part of the hymn, though. Um, one of the reasons that I like this song, because it was one of the first um, hymnal songs that I heard in canon. And singing in canon is very important to me. Because like I told you, every night after supper, I was hop on my grandmother's um, 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 uh, in the rocking chair. And then we had a whole routine. We will do mental math. Then we will tell stories. Then we'll do charades. And then we always, and then we'll, 
in, in prayer, and then it was the round of singing. And one of the best time I had, and it was funny because we love to sing in canon, because that's, that was their way of teaching me how to keep the beat, how to keep the harmonies. And, but the other reason that I like it, because one of my aunts always broke the canon. You think by, by then, afterward, at that time she was in her 40s, that she would get it. Oh, no, no. Every night at some point, she would mess up. So, <laughs> and, and the other reason that I love this song is because you can add any words you want to it. You can add your own words, you know, um, please, dear God, help me today. You know, you can do whatever you want with it. So that's one of the reasons that I love this song. Great. Well, David and I are going to try to do it. And if we mess up, we're just honoring you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, here we go. imitate or emulate uh, being on your grandma's lap. Ah, that was the best times. <laughs> Can't miss that. That's why I fell asleep every night. Great. Well, thank you so much. Blessing you. for you, safety for your husband, thank and you. uh, love from everybody here. Love it. I, I miss you, and St. Joe's is such a great community. Um, please continue your ministry because it, it still it still strengthened me to do the work. One of the gifts that um, St. Joe's gave me was a panoramic power, um, picture of a Pentecost Sunday, and I have it hanging in my house. And people would like, "Who's that church? Why are all these people in red? They are so happy!" So please, St. Joe's, continue your ministry. Thank you for all that you do, and thank you for. Praying for me and supporting me. And thank you, Father Marty, for always being there for me when I call you. <laughs> uh, please say hi to everybody for me. Thank you. You're well. God bless. <laughs>